These are two Philips tape recorders, model numbers EL3501s. Both of them look very similar, except the left hand one is a valve driven machine and the right hand one is a transistorized machine. Both machines were originally valve driven, but the right hand one was modified for transistors. The later decks are in a grey colour, as you may have seen in one of my other videos. The later machines were all almost all transistorized, yet there were a few valve machines still existing which, which were also painted grey. The valve machine is a little bit noisier. This is because the fan is running a lot harder, it has the valve to cool down. With the transistorized machine, it has no valves to cool down and the fan has a ballast resistor slowing it down to make it quieter. The machine was built in 1952. It is one of the earlier sort of professional Philips tape recorders, although I do believe there was one model before this, maybe two. The machine has similar controls to the original Philips's, uh, which is the fact that you've got your spool control, record and replay control and stop control. That's in the same position as almost all of their machines. You've got your spool control, which is variable. You've got your Cine and Nav adapter for smaller reels and larger reels. If I press this button here, the deck turns off. But it still senses that there's tape in position, you can hear the relays click. You'll notice then the tape was taken up straight away as soon as I press the power button. The machine also has a motor release or edit function. The tape can then be taken away and spliced on the splicing block. This one is not fix it, fixed. Sometimes there's one up here, sometimes there's one bolted here. Once the editor has done his editing, you can press that button again and the tape immediately is taken back up again. The machine spool control, when you press it, you notice that this comes out very slowly. That is because it is driven by a motor rather than a solenoid or relay and hence the quiet operation. The heads are interchangeable. You could either use a mono or stereo or stereo with pilot tone head block. Like all machi uh, most machines, all professionals, you've got an erase head, record head, and reproduce head. And this large pinch roller here, you've got a large capstan drum, sorry not capstan drum, large counter drum here, which operates a clockwork counter here. This clockwork counter can be reset by rotating uh, 360 degrees this little arm around the clock face, where a small little bit of metal comes out and touches the arms of the handles, so the arms of the uh, clock and moves them back to the zero position. The valve machine has five drawers underneath this. Four of them are amplifiers and one of them is a power supply. The transistorized machine has a easy to access pull out card section and a power supply underneath. The power supply on this machine is redundant and is probably just there just taking up space. They're not very easy to see in this light. We have eight buttons per unit. We've got a couple of buttons in the power supply, I think. Um, there should be a window here as well, but that's uh, somebody's put in a blank plate to cover it up. You press each individual button, and it gives a reading on this meter. And that's a sort of fault finding uh, system so that you can go through if B1 okay, is B2 okay, if not, replace this component. You've also got these here, which are plug pole units that can be taken out to disable channel 1's channel 2. With the front panel removed, you can see adjustable controls. The main volume output control, mono or stereo output control. Uh, I believe that's the equalization circuitry. Your two main fuses, as you can see in the rest of this circuitry, your single power on and off and basic other tape settings yeah, mod 1, mod 2 uh, which are all stated in the manual I'm not quite sure really what mod 1, mod 2 are uh, but for instance here you've got HF1, HF2 um, 
all these parts are then hidden underneath the metal panel so they can't be adjusted. The units also slide out. And let me just stretch it out a little bit. You might be able to see at the back a faint glow of the valves. Inside this unit is the wiring which uh, holds the capacitors and resistors as well. The transistorized machine is different. You have pull-in hot swap cards which if there was a fault with the card the idea is just to take that out, slot in a new one and then that machine's up and running again. There wouldn't be any fault finding uh, required so it means the machine is down for as little as time as possible. This is a big advantage over the valve machine, though the valve machine you can get inside and, and work with, a skilled engineer would still take a fair few minutes to actually find out what the problem was. If you believe that recording was not working or replay was not working or you weren't sure, you could just pull out both units and replace them straight away, then send them off to an engineer's lab to be repaired. These machines, though robust, do require maintenance. Hence why all of the screws and everything on these devices are made so that you don't need a screwdriver to get to them. The capstan here has an oil well hole which goes into the centre that uh, which needs to be kept regularly topped up. And you've got obviously switches that will need the contacts cleaning. There is adjustments for the tension arms underneath the machine, you've got your brake tensioners, you've got all sorts of controls underneath. Uh, which allow you to sort of like uh, make the machine run at its optimum performance. I'd like to make a special thank you to Steve Tidbury. He drove from the Netherlands to Austria to collect these machines plus two EL3505s. He then took them back and then brought them over from the Netherlands to the UK when he came over to visit. And he also spent a lot of time uh, hunting around for spare parts for these machines, which I'm very grateful for.